Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be Temple Part 6. Uh, the city of Jerusalem that were not killed with the sword were taken captive to Babylon for 70 years. At the end of 70 years, the Medes and the Persians came and conquered Babylon, actually destroyed the city. I'm not sure if it was exactly then or shortly thereafter, but uh, and they allowed Jerusalem, its inhabitants, the, the Ju uh, true Judah, to return to Jerusalem and to rebuild the wall and to rebuild their houses and the temple. Now remember, it had been burned. The city had been burned. And the, somebody left a comment, I think it's Awakening, left a really interesting thing that uh, makes sense that uh, a great number of the Jews, the real Jews, uh, stayed behind in Persia. I mean, uh, in, uh, in the land of Babylon. Uh, which was pretty much modern-day Iraq. They, you know, they, they stayed behind. You know, they'd gotten married, they had kids, had wives and kids, and, uh, or, and husbands and kids. And, uh, you know, they had places to live and a house and fruit trees and gardens. And they're like, go back to Jerusalem for what? That's going to be a lot of hard work. The wall's been torn down. The houses were burned. Um, of course, this is the, they just heard the stories from probably their grandparents. You know, 70 years, there's not going to be a lot of people alive that uh, saw Jerusalem before the 70 year captivity. Uh, Daniel probably died shortly thereafter the Persians took uh, Babylon because it's not recorded that Daniel returned to Jerusalem with them. Uh, at least, I mean, he could have returned. It's just it wasn't recorded in the Bible, at least not to my knowledge. You know, I, I don't know everything. Uh, so where is this covered? Well, the return is covered in Nehemiah and Ezra, two books in the Old Testament. If I remember correctly, Ezra was the priest and Nehemiah was king. And they were opposed by the people of the land, probably the Canaanites, you know, trying to make trouble, stirring up trouble against God's people, as always. And... Uh, and by the way, these are the a lot of them are the true Jews, not the synagogue of Satan. And uh, you want to read something interesting? Read Ezra chapter nine. God had a solution for mixed marriages with the Canaanites. Now the thing is, um, a lot of the people of Judah that went to Babylon married into the people of the land. And then when they returned to Jerusalem, they brought their heathen hybrid wives and husbands with them. So, you know, there was a reason why there were genealogies in the Bible. You know, it said, and Adam begat, you know, and, and be, he begat, and he begat, and he begat. You know, Abraham begat Isaac. Isaac begat Jacob. Jacob begat, you know, Joseph and Benjamin and Judah and Levi and Zebulon and, you know, Dinah. And, you know, there's a reason for that. And the reason being was so that you could trace back the lines so that they the lines were not polluted uh, the lines the, the bloodlines got polluted in Genesis 6 
But uh, the average churches, oh, they explain that away and say, oh, uh, you know, it doesn't matter anymore. Christ came to save everybody. Um, that's why they discourage you from reading the Bible, of the Old Testament anyways. You know, uh, I heard somebody that was a an ex-Jehovah's Witness that said the reason the Watchtower put out so much uh, booklets for you to read was because they wanted you to read their booklets and not the Bible. Because once you started reading the Bible, uh, they would uh, end up leaving the organization because you'd find out what a fraud they were. I mean, even their Bible... Their corrupted Bible will uh, has enough in it to make you realize that they are a in error, error, major errors. I mean, they don't even know who Jesus is. They think Jesus is Michael the Archangel. I mean, really, they they do. So, all right. Well, let's read. Let's start reading uh, the return. All right, let's uh, let's take a look at Ezra, book of Ezra, chapter 1 and verse 1. Now, remember something. There's a very, very real possibility that Cyrus was the uh, leader of Persia. There's a very real possibility he had Israelite blood throwing, flowing through his veins. A very real possibility. Because Israel had been scattered uh, throughout, you know, all these time periods. And that's very, very possible. So let's take a look. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia. Now remember, Persia became the, um, parts of Persia became the Parthian Empire. And the Parthian Empire was a contemporary of Rome, and they were, Rome tried to conquer the Parthian Empire. They had some success, and, and they had some failures too, but they didn't like messing with the Parthians because the Parthians had kicked their rear a few times if you get my drift. They never did conquer Par, uh, the Parthian Empire, Rome. They never did. And... Um, they were the king, possibly, my, my opinion is the wise men that went to uh, looking for Jesus and went to Herod, they were, probably, they were probably Parthians because the Parthians were uh, tied in with the Hebrews and the Scythians. And the thing is, you know, these wise men that were looking for Jesus when they went to Herod and says, oh, well, we saw his star in the east. Uh, you know, they, did, they didn't come by themselves. I bet you they had a whole caravan, including soldiers. And that's probably why Herod was afraid, you know. But probably not, well, he was afraid because, you know, the future ruling king. But... Uh, the Parthians were, from what I understand, they were, the Romans and the Parthians, uh, the Romans didn't want trouble with the Parthians, so they let them come to the temple during the feasts and what have you to, uh, to have, you know, well, some religious freedom because they didn't want problems. There was a time when Parthia had conquered... Uh, Israel and Ju uh, uh, Jerusalem, and then the Romans took it back. But uh, Rome, uh, Rome didn't want to mess with the Parthians too much. I mean, they tried to take them, and they they couldn't do it, and they got their butts whipped a couple times. So, uh, yeah. So let's read about the Parthia, Parthians, in the Book of Acts. Uh, but Parthia was. Uh, covered the area of what is uh, modern-day Iran and Persia. So they've had different names, but let's read Acts chapter 2 real quick. Verse 1. 
And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Now this is Pentecost. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now they're not speaking gibberish. They're speaking other languages that they didn't know before. Verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation, out of every nation under heaven. And when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that they heard every man, uh, that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Now, you know, these guys are fishermen. They're not princes. Uh, you know, the, the princes in the palaces, they get the good education. These are fishermen, okay? The Galileans, they're not well-educated. They're like the country hicks, uh, sort of, kind of. And I'm not using that in a derogatory uh, manner. I'm really not. That's just how, you know, people like from New York, you know, that attend these uh, so-called liberal satanic universities and they think they're so smart and they go oh well that guy's a country hick you know he's a farmer you know they they throw that out as a derogatory term but you know the galileans they they were fishermen you know tax collectors uh so are not all these which speak galileans and how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born so they knew full well that these guys, you know, they're Galileans. They're not la linguists and language scholars. No. Now listen to this. Um, verse 9. Parthians. How come nobody's ever heard of the Parthian Empire? They've deleted it from history. Do you know that I've read all kinds of stuff about world history, and I only found out about the Parthian Empire like within the last six months? Why is that? We always hear about Rome, 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 Rome. Parthian Empire was just as large as Rome, just as powerful, and they were their neighbors and never heard a word about it. Why? Guess what? They were probably Hebrews, or at least a lot of them were. That's why you've never heard of them. Here it is. These Parthians are in Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia. What's Mesopotamia? That's where Abraham came from. That's where uh, Iraq is. And in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, uh, Phrygia and Pamphylia, in Egypt and in parts of Libya, about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. You know, if they were drunk, how, how come they're speaking in, uh, I'm sure they were speaking fluently in other languages. But if you didn't understand that language, you're thinking, oh, yeah, they're just talking gibberish and they're, they're drunk. Parthians. Parthians, people. Never heard of it, huh? Me neither. I can't believe that. And I considered myself a student of history. I mean, I'm not a scholar or anything, but, you know. All right, verse 1, Ezra chapter 1, verse 1. You got a little background. Boy, I have 14 minutes and I've just covered the introduction, right? Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. Remember, Jeremiah said 70 years, captivity. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven, hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, 
And he hath charged me to build him an house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Now, let's pause here a second. Remember the statue that Nebuchadnezzar had that we read in uh, Daniel in the last study? The head of gold was Babylon. Then it had a chest and arms of silver. Now, silver is what the Lord wants his believers to be. Uh, unregenerate man is likened unto uh, sort of kind of like brass. But he wants us to be like silver. Just remember, silver is a shiny metal. They used to make mirrors out of silver. Matter of fact, let's take a look at something real quick. All right, I found it. Um, Zechariah chapter 13. Uh, verse 7, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. Remember, that's what uh, Jesus said in the garden, right? And I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire. Remember, John the Baptist said that uh, Jesus would baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire? Oh, yeah. And if anybody's interested in proving that, I did an entire playlist on fire. Boy, I tell you what, I've got probably 1,100 plus videos out now. And a lot of them are an hour long. A lot of them. A lot of them. So, you know, that's why I don't cover everything. Because, like I say, you want to see uh, about fire? Go to that playlist. Hit the part where it hits the New Testament. There's a lot of fire. Is oof. It's not just to destroy the wicked. It's also to refine us. Um but listen to this. And I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord is my God. Now, you know, how do you know when silver is perfectly refined um, well what they do is they melt they melt the silver and then depending upon usually with precious metals uh, they sink to the bottom and then the impurities will float on the top and then you scrape off the impurities and you do that a couple of times and what you're left with is you know pure silver or pure gold right and somebody once asked a refiner, well, how do you know when the silver has been refined and when it's, you know, 99.999% pure? He said, it's simple. I look at it, and when I can see my reflection in the silver, I know it's done. Does that make sense? And I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined. So when the Lord looks at us and sees his reflection and we're like him he knows we've been refined as silver think about that all right so back to Ezra chapter 2 thus say Osiris king of Persia the Lord God of heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth and hath charged me to build him an house at Jerusalem which is in Judah. Now remember, David couldn't build the house because he was a bloody man. So his son Solomon had to build it. But here Cyrus is saying, God told me to build this thing. Verse 3. Who is there among you of all his people? 
his God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God which is in Jerusalem. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts besides the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin, Judah and Benjamin, and the priests and the Levites. All right. So here is you got Judah, Benjamin, and the Levites. Now, what was Apostle Paul? Well, he was a Jew by religion, they say. Okay, he was a Pharisee, which was a branch of the Jews. Uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were branches of the you know Jews, uh, not too different than Baptists and Lutherans, and uh, as being Christians or Methodists, you know, just different denominations. Uh, so, but he was uh, Paul was a Benjamin. Benjamite by his tribe. Benjamin was the younger brother of Joseph, another member of the tribe. Remember, there's 12 tribes. The churches will try to make you think that, oh, well, every tribe is a Jew. That's, no, 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 no. No, that's not true. So, then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah, and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites, with all them whose spirit God hath raised to go up to build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. And all they that were about them strengthened their hands with vessels of silver, with gold, with goods, and with beasts, and with precious things, beside all that was willingly offered. And Cyrus the king brought forth the vessels of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had brought forth out of Jerusalem and had put them in the house of his gods. Even those did Cyrus, king of Persia, bring forth by the hand of uh, Mithridath the treasure and numbered them into Sheshbazar, hmm, the prince of Judah. And this is the number of them, 30 chargers of gold, 1,000 chargers of silver, 9 and 20 knives, uh, 30 basins of gold, silver basins of a second sort, 410, and other vessels, 1,000. And all the vessels of gold and of silver were 5,400. All these did Shesh Bazaar bring up with them of the captivity which were brought up from Babylon unto Jerusalem. All right, let's skip to Ezra chapter 3, verse 1. And when the seventh month was come, and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem. Then stood up Jeshua, that looks like Joshua, or Yeshua, Jeshua, the son of Jozadek, and his brethren, the priests, and Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and his brethren, and builded, they builded the altar of the God of Israel to offer burnt offerings thereon, as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. And they set the altar upon his basis, for fear was upon them because of the people of those countries, and they offered burnt offerings thereon, unto the Lord, even burnt offerings, morning and evening. They also kept the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, this was one of the three most important feasts of um, Israel. There was three times a year that the males were supposed to uh, appear before the Lord. Passover was one, and Tabernacles was the other, and... Um, I'm thinking it was the Feast of Booths was the other one, but I'm not totally sure. I've been thinking about doing the um, the feasts, but, you know, the feasts are kind of an interesting uh, study because you could see the plan of salvation in the 
feasts and festivals of the Lord. I mean, let's face it, Passover was the uh, sacrifice of the sinless lamb, which was Christ. You know? And then um, unleavened bread, which followed Passover, was the um, seven days after the Passover, uh, was when people were supposed to take all the, well, leaven was likened unto sin. And people were supposed to go through the house and take all the sin or leaven out of their house. Well, after the sacrifice of the sinless lamb, Christ on the cross, we were, we were considered unleavened, unleavened, and of course, unleavened bread, well, Jesus was the bread of life, right? There's a lot of symbolism. I mean, it's just, you know, when people tell me that uh, this is just a fake book, well, to them it's a fake book because, well, let's read it. The Natural Man. Here's that Paul, you know, that this is who those Hebrew roots people hate, Paul. 1 Corinthians 2.14 but the natural man, the flesh man, the non-spiritual man, but the natural man receiveth not, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So if you don't have the Spirit of the Lord, you ain't going to understand nothing. Do you get my drift? All right, Ezra 4. They kept also the Feast of Tabernacles, as it is written, and offered the daily burnt offerings by number, according to the custom, as the duty of every day required, and afterward offered the continual burnt offering, both of the new moons and of all the set feasts of the Lord that were consecrated of every one that willingly offered a freewill offering unto the Lord. From the first day of the seventh month began they to offer burnt offerings unto the Lord, but the foundation of the temple of the Lord was not yet laid. They gave money also unto the masons and to the carpenters, and meat and drink and oil unto them of Zidon, and to them of Tyre, to bring cedar trees from Lebanon to the Sea of Joppa, according to the grant that they had of Cyrus, king of Persia. Uh... Remember Hiram? He was uh, that was in a that was in a previous study. He helped uh, Solomon with the uh, cedars of Lebanon. Verse eight. Now in the second year they're coming unto the house of God at Jerusalem. In the second month began Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel and Jeshua the son of Josedek, and the remnant of their brethren, the priests and the Levites, the priests and the Levites. And all they that were come out of the captivity unto Jerusalem and appointed the Levites from 20 years old and upward to set forward the work of the house of the Lord. Then stood Jeshua with his sons and his brethren, Cadmiel and his sons, the sons of Judah, together to set forward the workmen in the house of the God, uh, the sons of Henadad with their sons and their brethren, the Levites. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priests in their apparel with trumpets, and the Levites and sons of Asaph with cymbals to praise the Lord after the ordinance of King of, of David, king of Israel. You know, there's a feast of trumpets. Think about that. When uh, the seven trumpets in Revelation, oh yeah. Verse 11, And they sang together by course, and praising and giving thanks unto the Lord, because he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Can I get an amen? Because he is good, and giving thanks unto the Lord, because he is good, for his mercy endureth forever toward Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the priests and Levites and chief of the fathers who were ancient men, 
ancient men, they were old people, that had seen the first house when the foundation of this house was laid before they, their eyes, wept with a loud voice, and many shouted aloud for joy. So the ancient people, the old guys, you know, that had seen the first temple, and they're looking at this temple, which is pales in comparison. I mean, the first temple was magnificent, just absolutely magnificent. I mean, this the second temple probably looks like a, a hobo shack compared to, you know, the first temple. So they were we they were they were they wept with a loud voice, but the other people they're shouting with for joy. Verse thirteen, so that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people, for the people shouted with a loud shout, and the noise was heard afar off. All right, let's go to chapter 4, Ezra, verse 1. Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity built the temple unto the Lord God of Israel, oh yeah, adversaries. What's an adversary? An enemy. These are the enemies of Judah and Benjamin. Oh yeah. Uh, I hear people say, but God loves everybody. Uh, you think God doesn't have enemies? I mean, wasn't there a war in heaven? Didn't Satan try to kill the Lord? War in heaven? I mean, really? And you don't think Satanists on earth hate the Lord? And are his enemies? I mean, really? And you wonder why Christianity is dying. People are idiots. They don't use their brains. Now, when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity built a temple unto the Lord God of Israel, then they came to uh, Jerubbabel, Jerubbabel, and unto the chief of the fathers, and said unto them, Let us build with you, for we seek your God as ye do, and we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Esar Haddon, king of Asher, which brought us up thither, hither. But Jerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us. Ye have nothing to do with us to build an house unto our God, but we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, hath commanded us. See, the enemies of God wanted to sneak on in there and throw a monkey wrench in the, uh, in the gears and mess things up. But these people had more sense than probably 98% of the church world today. Maybe 99.9, .9, I don't know. Maybe 99.999, I don't know. Verse 4. Then the people of the land, the heathens, then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, or Darius, king of Persia. Um, I've heard, you know, when you read Wikipedia, they'll tell you that Darius, or Darius, I believe, is uh, was a non-existent figure in history that exists only in the Bible. I don't think so. I, I think Cyrus and uh, was probably probably the father of Darius, or perhaps Darius or Darius was the uh, high-ranking general. I don't know. We'll find out one day. But if the history books disagree with the Bible, I'm going to go with the Bible. Uh, and in the reign of 
Ahasuerus, in the beginning of his reign, wrote they unto him an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. And in the days of Artaxerxes, wrote Bishlam, Mithridath, Tabiel, and the rest of his companions unto Artaxerxes, king of Persia. And the writing of the letter was written in the Syrian tongue and interpreted in the Syrian tongue. Rehum the chancellor in Shimshai, the scribe, wrote a letter against Jerusalem to Artaxerxes the king in this sort. Then wrote Rehum the chancellor in Shimshai, the scribe, and the rest of their companions, the Dinaites, the Arphrasarthrites, the Tarpalites, the Aphrasites, the Archivites, the Babylonians, the Susanchites, the Dehavites, and the Elamites. Ah, the Elamites. You know what? We uh, read about the Elamites that were in Jerusalem uh, when we read the, the book of Acts, when they were speaking in all the tongues, remember? Verse 10, And the rest of the nations whom the great noble Asnapar brought over and set in the cities of Samaria, and the rest that are on this side of the river, and at such a time. This is the copy of the letter that they sent unto him, even unto Artaxerxes the king, the servants, thy servants, the men, on this side of the river, and at such a time. So now we're going to read the, um, the letter. Be it known unto the king that the Jews which came up from thee to us are come unto Jerusalem, building the rebellious and the bad city, and have set up the walls thereof, and joined the foundations. Be it known now unto the king, that if this city be builded, and the walls set up again, then they will not pay toll, tribute, and custom, and so thou shalt endanger, oh, I'm sorry, end damage the revenue of the kings. Now because we have maintenance from the king's palace, and it was not meet for us to see the king's dishonor, therefore we have sent and certified the king." that search may be made in the book of the records of thy fathers, so shalt thou find in the book of the records, and know that this city is a rebellious city, and hurtful unto kings and provinces, and that they have moved sedition within the same of old time, for which cause was the city destroyed. We certify the king that if this city be builded again, and the walls thereof set up, by this means, Thou shalt have no portion on this side the river. Then sent the king an answer unto Rehum the chancellor, and to Shimshai the scribe, and to the rest of their companions that dwell in Samaria, and unto the rest beyond the river, peace, and at such a time. The letter which he sent unto us hath been plainly read before me, and I commanded, and search hath been made, and it is found that the city of old time had made insurrection against kings, and that rebellion and sedition have been made therein. There have been mighty kings also over Jerusalem, which have ruled over all countries beyond the river, and toll, tribute, and custom was paid unto them. Give ye now commandment to cause these men to cease, and that the city be not builded until another commandment shall be given from me. Take heed now that ye fail not to do this, why should damage grow to the hurt of the kings? And when the copy of King Artaxerxes' letter was read before Rehum and Shimshai the scribe and their companions, they went up in haste to Jerusalem under the Jews and made them to cease by force and power. Then ceased the work of the house of God which is at Jerusalem. So it ceased under the second year of the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Now, I don't know. I read this, and I'm thinking they got more than one king. That just doesn't make much sense. Uh, maybe he's a king of a province, and Darius is like the big guy, and then Artaxerxes is like a governor or something. I'm not totally sure. So, here it is. The enemies of the Lord and the enemies of Judah want to stop the work and uh, they couldn't infiltrate 
because they wanted to, oh, well, we want to help you build the house. So what they did was they did an end around and went to the civil rulers and they're spreading lies, right? Sounds just like Satan, the father of lies, right? Oh, yeah. All right, let's read Ezra number five, chapter five. Then the prophets Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Iddo prophesied unto the Jews that were in Jerusalem and in, that were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel, even unto them. Then rose up Jerubbabel the son of Shealtiel and Jeshua the son of Josedek, and began to build the house of God which is at Jerusalem. And with them were the prophets of God helping them. At the same time came to them Tatnai governor on the side, the river, and Shetharbaznal and their companions, and said thus unto them, Who hath commanded you to build this house and to make up this wall? Now, remember something, know something. When the Medes and Persians made a decree, one of the kings, nobody could rescind it. If they made a law, nobody could rescind it. So, I think we'll find that out. Oh, yeah, let's, let's take a look at that real quick. Ah, uh, here we go. Daniel chapter 6 and verse 12. Let's take a look at this. Uh, a little bit of background. Why did Daniel get thrown into the lion's den? Well, they... Uh, the enemies of God and of Daniel tricked the ruler of where Daniel was in Babylon, the Persians, to make a decree that uh, nobody could make any, they had to make all their requests to God, they had to make it to the this ruler in, uh, the ruler of the Persians for 30 days. So when Daniel uh, prayed to the Lord, he technically broke the law. And then the ruler figured out what they had done, and he wasn't happy about it, but he had to follow the law. Now, if you want to read about it, Daniel in the lion's den, you can read about it in Daniel 6 and verse 12. Actually, a whole chapter, you know. Uh, then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree, his law. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within thirty days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. So whenever there's a decree by the Persians, you couldn't change that law. Well, guess what? Uh, Cyrus made a decree that the house of the Lord would be built. So this Artaxerxes or whoever, he had no authority to change the, to change the, the law. So what's going on here? All right. Uh, so Ezra 5 verse 4. Then said we unto them after this manner. So, you know, basically they came to them and said, what do you think you're doing? You were told not to build this house. Then said we unto them after this manner, what are the names of the, the men that make this building? But the eye of their God was upon the elders of the Jews that they could not cause them to cease till the matter came to Darius or Darius. And then they returned answer by letter concerning this matter. A copy of the letter that Tatnal, the governor on this side, the river, and Shethar. Bosnai and his companions, the uh, Afarshites, which were on this side of the river, sent unto Darius the king. They sent a letter unto him, whereon, wherein was written thus, Unto Darius the king, all peace. Be it known unto the key, king that we went into the province of Judea to the house of the great God, which is builded with great stones and timbers, laid in the walls, and this work goeth fast on and prospereth in their hands. Then asked we those elders and said unto them thus, Who commanded you to build this house and to make up these walls? We asked them their names also to certify thee that we might write the names of the men that were the chief of them. And thus they returned us answer, saying, 
we are the servants of the God of heaven and earth and build the house that was builded these many years ago, which a great king of Israel builded and set up. But after that, our fathers had provoked, but after that, our fathers had provoked the God of heaven unto wrath. He gave them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, the Chaldean, who destroyed this house and carried the people away into Babylon. But in the first year of Cyrus, the king of Babylon, the same king Cyrus made a decree, made a decree. Remember, the alter, you can't alter the decree of the king, the law, the Medes and the Persians. It doesn't alter. But in the first year of Cyrus, the king of Babylon, the same king Cyrus made a decree to build this house of God. And the vessels also of gold and the silver of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took out of the temple that was in Jerusalem and brought them into the temple of Babylon, those did Cyrus the king take out of the temple of Babylon, and they were delivered unto one whose name was Shesh Bazar, whom he had made governor, and said unto him, Take these vessels, go, carry them into the temple that is in Jerusalem, and let the house of God be builded in this place. And let the house of God be builded in this place. Then came the same Shesh Bazar, and laid the foundation of the house of God, which is in Jerusalem, and since that time, even unto now, hath it been in building, and yet it is not finished. Now therefore, if it seem good to the king, let there be search made in the king's treasure house, which is there at Babylon, whether it be so that a decree, that a decree was made of Cyrus the king to build this house of God at Jerusalem, and let the king send his pleasure to us concerning this matter. Oh yeah. Oh boy. Ezra chapter 6. Then Darius the king made a decree, and search was made in the house of the walls where the treasures were laid up in Babylon, and there was found at Achmetha in the palace that is in the province of the Medes a roll, and therein was a record thus written. In the first year of Cyrus the king, the same Cyrus the king made a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Let the house be builded. So here it is. Cyrus the king made a decree. Let the house be builded, the place where they offered sacrifices, and let the foundations thereof be strongly laid, laid the height thereof three score cubits, and the breadth thereof three score cubits, with three rows of great stones and a row of new timber, and let the expenses be given out of the king's house. In other words, uh, the king of Persia is going to pay for the whole deal. And also let the golden and silver vessels of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took forth out of the temple, which is at Jerusalem, and brought into Babylon, be restored and brought again unto the temple, which is at Jerusalem, every one to his place, and place them in the house of God. Now therefore, Tetnai, Tetnai, um, Governor, beyond the river, Chef Arbosnai, and your companions, the Arphrashites, which are beyond the river, be ye far from thence. Let the work of this house of God alone, in other words, all you trying to stop the work of the Lord, shut up and get out of the way. That's the Bob translation. Let the work of this house of God alone, let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews build this house of God in his place. Moreover, I make a decree what ye shall do to the elders of these Jews for the building of this house of God, that of the king's goods, even of the tribute beyond the river, forthwith expenses be given unto these men, that they be not hindered. Uh, expenses, in other words, pay for it, right? And that which they have need of, both young bullocks and rams and lambs, for the burnt offering of the God of heaven, wheat, salt, wine, and oil, according to the appointment of the priests which are at Jerusalem, let it be given them day by day without fail, that they may offer sacrifices of sweet savors unto the God of heaven and pray for the life of the king and of his sons. That's a good thing. I'll tell you what, I'd love to have uh, people of the Lord praying for my life. Also, I have made a decree that whatsoever shall alter this word, let timber be pulled down from his house, and being set up, let him be hanged thereon, and let his house be made a dunghill for this. 
So if anybody tries to change the decree of Darius and of Cyrus, uh, they're you know let the timber be pulled down from his house. You know let the let his house the wood in his house be pulled down. Be, let it be set up and then use it as the hanging with. And then let his house be a a pile of cow manure. Oh yeah. Verse 12, And the God that hath caused his name to dwell there, destroy all kings and people that shall put to their hand to alter and to destroy this house of God, which is at Jerusalem. I, Darius, or Darius, have made a decree, let it be done with speed. Oh, yeah. Then Tatnai, governor on this side of the river, uh, chef whatever, and their companions, according to that which Darius the king had said, so they did speedily. And the elders of the Jews built it, and they prophesied, uh, prospered through the prof prophesying of Haggai the prophet, and Zechariah the son of Iddo, and they built it and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel, according to the commandments of Cyrus and Darius and Artaxerxes, king of Persia. I don't get this. You got a Darius and you got an Artaxerxes, kings of Persia. Maybe they were just kings of different provinces. I don't know. And this house was finished on the third day of the month Adar, which was in the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king. And the children of Israel, the priests and the Levites, and the rest of the children of Israel, the captivity, kept the dedication of this house of God with joy. Now, I don't know exactly uh but from what i understand hanukkah is the feast of dedication it's only mentioned one time in the bible so i'm not sure i don't know verse 17 and offered at the de de dedication of this of this house of god and hundred bullocks 200 rams 400 lambs and for a sin offering for all Israel, twelve he goats, according to the number of the tribes of Israel. So even though the Israelites were in uh, ten tribes, were basically in captivity. Um, they're offering sacrifices for all twelve tribes, and they set the priests in their divisions and the Levites in their courses for the service of God, which is at Jerusalem as it is written in the book of Moses. And the children of the captivity kept the Passover upon the fourteenth day of the first month. And the priests and the Levites were purified together. All of them were pure and killed the Passover for all the children of the captivity and for their brethren the priests and for themselves. And the children of Israel, which were come again out of captivity and all such as had separated themselves unto them, from the filthiness of the heathen of the land. Ah, and ha as had separated themselves unto them from the filthiness of the heathen of the land to seek the Lord God of Israel did eat and kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with joy for the Lord had made them joyful and turned the heart of the king of Assyria unto them to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. You see, God wants us to be a separated people from the filthiness of the heathen of the land. Boy, you won't hear that preached in church. No. All right, let's read. All right, everybody, uh, we've been almost an hour, and um, I guess I'm going to read the entire book of Ezra, and then we'll do a little bit of Nehemiah, and we'll cover some of the high points, and then, uh, then we're going to do the New Testament. So, Persia... Persia was the uh, the Silver Kingdom. Kind of try to remember that. And some of the uh, some of uh, Judah stayed behind in Babylon.
probably not the city, but I mean the, uh, the territory, because the city was destroyed. I covered that in a previous study. So, all right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.